What's good guys, today you join me in the beautiful city of York and I'm gonna be sharing with you today five street photography mistakes made by beginners. Now, don't get me wrong, I am completely guilty of still making some of these mistakes, but the good thing is you can easily change them around, you can easily fix these little problems and take your photography to that next level. But before we get started, I have to speak about the microphone that I'm gonna be using in today's video. This is the Joby Wavo Air. Now, uh, this microphone is absolutely incredible. It's the brand new set from Joby themselves, and I'm gonna be using it throughout today's video. And at the end of today's video, I'm gonna be giving you some more details about this microphone. So the best thing about lav mics is they're portable, they have great sound quality, and you can be at far distances from the camera and still get exceptional sound. So I could be here, here, and even here. No, here. <laughs> I could definitely see these microphones being a huge benefit going forward. So I will be using them for my own content as well as professional stuff as well with interviews and things like that. But less about the microphones. Now let's jump on to the first mistake when it comes to street photography. Street photography mistake number one, and this is something I'm hugely guilty of, is impatience and rushing about. When I go out and do my POVs, I try and cover as many areas in the city as possible. And sometimes that's good because you're, you know, you're, you're trying to cover a lot of different areas and those different areas are going to give you different results. But sometimes if you don't float around certain areas of a city for long enough, you might miss some really good opportunities for photographs. So what I've been doing recently is just taking a step back. In my, one of my most recent POVs, uh, the Leeds Sunset one, I took my time of it. I waited around certain areas of the city and I was able to get some great results because I was just waiting for subjects to come into my frame because the framing around it was going to look great if I put X, Y and Z together. That could be a person walking through your shot or it could be their light being in a certain position. A lot of different framing elements can create different shots and if you just wait around certain areas, if you've got that vision, you will hopefully be able to execute it. Mistake number two when it comes to street photography is quite simply carrying way too much equipment. I find if you carry too much equipment when doing street photography, it's a burden. After a couple of hours of walking, you're really gonna feel the strain of it and you're just not gonna feel as productive. Now, when I started doing street photography, I used to carry like five or six lenses. I used to carry nearly everything I had. Super dumb, super stupid mistake. So now I try and bring that down to maybe two or three lenses, which some people might say is still too much. I usually bring like a wide, like the 16 to 35, the 85 prime because I love it. And then of course my beast that is the 70 to 200. But sometimes when I go out and just do a very simple walk, I just take one lens, the camera and a couple of batteries and then I'm sorted. The lighter you are, the more productive you're gonna be, the longer you're gonna wanna stay out and the better photographs you're gonna take. Mistake number three when it comes to street photography is forgetting the little details. Now this is something that I am really guilty of because I sometimes just go out and shoot and there's not really sometimes a meaning to it. It's just that looks cool, let me get a photo of it. But what I've been trying to dial in is focus on small specific details. So it might be simple like someone's hand gestures, someone wearing a really cool colour coat and it coordinates with a background, someone on their phone, it could be anything. But what you might want to do is go out and one day do some street photography but think this day it's raining i want to focus on umbrellas this day i want to focus on hand gestures there's a lot of different signals that you can try and spot to get those little details to have a wider and broader meaning in your street photography and sometimes as well that helps with the narrative and it helps tell a story which is a big part of street photography. Sorry if that point was a little bit long-winded, but I think it's a really good point for street photography and it is definitely something I'm working towards to try and contextualize and take my photography to new heights and new levels. And I guarantee if you try this for yourself, you'll see a massive improvement in your own work. Street photography mistake number four is always using a wider aperture number. Now this is something I'm hugely guilty of, but I love doing it. 
I love shooting with an 85mm f1.4, getting that compression, getting that depth of field because you can really isolate your subjects and get some really cool shots. But sometimes you want to switch up your style. Sometimes that's not always the best approach for every single photograph. You want to sometimes have a narrower aperture number of like f8, f11 and have more things in your photograph like the foreground and the background in focus so it can tell a broader story so you can get more information in the frame a lot of street photographers actually use a narrower aperture number rather than a shallower aperture number now i'm always going to continue doing both uh, in some scenes and some situations i'm going to use a narrower depth of field but in other ones i'm going to use a wider depth of field using f1 a f2 a it really depends on the scene the context the subjects but mix up your styles and try different elements and see what you can create from that. Street photography mistake number five is not getting close enough to your subject. Now I totally understand that this is a confidence thing. It can be really nerve wracking trying to get a photo of someone and getting so close to them at the same time. You're always worried that someone's gonna say something or someone's gonna punch you in the throat. Now in my experience, I've never had a single problem with anyone taking their photographs in a public place at all. But it just does take practice to gain that confidence, to boost that confidence. So all I can recommend really here is to just go out and shoot. Just go out and try it. Maybe even ask a few people if you could take their photographs just so you see how that interaction goes. You could build that confidence. And also use focal lengths that are a bit wider. Don't use a telephoto lens when doing street photography. Use something like a 35 or a 50. These are the two most popular lenses and focal lengths when it comes to street photography. It's also the most popular because human vision is at like 50 mil. So it's very familiar using a 50 mil lens. It looks very really naturalistic. So using these lenses will give you the best shot of getting really good street photography and allow you to get closer to the subjects as well. So that's all at the street photography mistakes that I have got left to share with you guys. Now, you might be able to tell, there's Jack in the background running around like a madman. <laughs> I've mic'd him up with a second Joby mic because with this set you get two of them. So you can hear me at this level. And you can hear me at this probably the same level. How? Oh, that is good. That is so good because I feel like if you're doing videos of multiple people, challenges, or you're shooting interviews, something in a professional setting, having two microphones set at the same time is hugely beneficial. Now I have actually got to ask Jack one question and it is to do with street photography and is there any further tips that you can share with the audience? Now I'm gonna pass you the camera because you're like six foot and really <laughs> tall. <laughs> My photography tip is when you're out taking photos and I see a lot of, especially new photographers doing this, right? You'll line up a shot and you'll go, actually I don't like that shot and you won't take that shot. But especially when you're learning, take that shot because at the worst possible circumstance you will take a photo and that photo will be rubbish and then you can learn something from that photo and take a better photo next time so my tip is take wait not tip <laughs> my photography mistake is not taking photos which sounds really obvious it sounds obvious but it's <laughs> good because and i feel like people have doubts sometimes about their own photography and we're in a digital age now. You know, you could just so simply delete that photograph, but you can never recreate that moment that you decided not to photograph. So yeah, take photographs. Simple as that. Cool. That's street photography. Can I, can I give this back? This is really <laughs> heavy. The microphones are so lightweight, yeah. so I was expecting your whole setup to be no, lightweight, the, uh, but six... that camera is heavy. It is, it is not a lightweight setup, this. Yeah, great to catch up with Jack. Go and check out his channel. He's been making a video about infrared filters today, which is uh, been really interested to see the results of. So if you want to check that out, I'm sure it'll be on his channel some point in the future. But the last thing that I'm going to do today is tell you a bit more about these microphones, and then we're going to have a look for the hashtag CP photos and see what you guys have been creating. Bye, Jack. Bye, Jack. Okay, so we're back from the beautiful city of York. Now let's talk a little bit more about the Joby Wavo Air microphones. And we'll start with the many different mounting options. So let's start with the receiver, nice and simple, where we have a hot shoe mount for it, where we just put it on top of the camera, plug it in, and you're ready to go. The first mounting options with the transmitters is a classic. It is, of course, the clamp, which you can do. So just clamp onto your jeans, as I showed earlier, put a line in, and then you could just clip it on to your T-shirt, and then you're ready to go. The clever thing is about both of these transmitters, 
both of them have microphones built in. So you don't have to use a line in if you don't want to. So I could just clamp this right onto here and now turn it on and then I'm ready to go. If it's a little bit windy, these also have dead cats. So you could just plop that on and then you, you, you're set on your way. Another really cool mounting option for these microphones is this. Well, I, that was actually a good throw, definitely the first time. Haven't tried that like six times in a row. Well, I actually have a magnet underneath my t-shirt where the microphone just connects to, like so. How cool is that? So you could just have it around your neck and you can have it exposed like so, or you could just hide the magnet underneath your t-shirt, which is what I prefer to do, and then you could just clamp it on. Now you can also have a bit of a game of it as well. One, two, three, so when you get your brand new microphones out of the box, they should already be paired with one another when you turn them on. If they're not, then you use this little pin. Probably gonna have a hard time focusing on it right there. It's basically one you use for a SIM card for your phone. And with this little hole right here, where it says pair, you just put that straight in the hole and then it will pair the microphones if they're not already. But when you get them out, most likely they will be paired ready to go. So you can just get straight in and start filming. So the great thing about these microphones as well is you get two different cables, one for your phone, one for the camera, so it just broadens your horizon to what camera you can use, what devices you can use these microphones in, so you can deliver high quality audio no matter what. One of the most important and fundamental parts of filmmaking is audio. So if you are currently on the market for a set of lav mics that are gonna give you great audio quality, they're easy to use, I highly encourage you to check out the Wavo Air. They are great microphones and I will be using them for my own content going forward. So yeah, go and check them out, link is in the description below. Now let's have a look for the hashtag CP photos. So our first photograph on the hashtag today is this one by SG Photographs. Really like this look up shot, really cool building as well really draws your eye into that shot love it this street photo by jd noob really cool shot right there like the framing with the two plant pots as well draws your eye into the subject really cool colors on it as well our next one is gonna oh i love this look at the neon city we've got going on here i like it mobile photography smashed it and we've got a cool duck i, I just like that i think that's a duck is that no that's a chicken i'm an idiot our next shot is, oh, I like this one. I love the simplicity of this one. Subject, shadows, highlights, looks great. Like this whole frame is really cool, tells a really nice story and a really simple frame that is just really well executed. Raw artifacts, I love it. Rome, I wanna go there in the future as well because it looks perfecto. Rocking on to this drone shot by uh, Stills BZ. That is satisfying to the eye, I like that. That is really satisfying. I need to do some more drone photography. I should probably do a video about drone photography maybe. Would you be interested in that? Uh, that was a really cool shot, loved it. Next one is gonna be, oh, I like this. I like this, I like these rolling shots. Yes, yes. By uh, Dem Shots, Dem, these are, oh, look at these. Our next one is going to be, oh, that's slanted. Jesus Christ, who built that house? Was it built by me? Someone didn't have a spirit level, did they? That's a bit wonky. Mr. Lincolnshire, really cool shot, really moody with the fog and everything. Whoever built that is definitely a cowboy builder. Our next photograph is going to be, we'll have a look at two more today. Two more, we'll have a look. Which one shall we? <gasps> yes, Brewity Photography, classic photo spot. I love it. I'm black and white. Mmm. Super moody, super dramatic. And one more photograph today, and it's going to be, I'm gonna just scroll, not look, and stop here. Gotta choose one from here. You, it's a tram, gotta choose a tram. And this is by Edin. Edin, really cool tram shot right here. That's where I'm gonna be leaving today's street photography video, guys. Is there any mistakes that I've missed? Is there any mistakes that you've made when doing street photography that you think should be included? If so, let me know in the comment section below. It might help out other photographers as well and help them take their photography to that next level. If you liked today's video, hit the like button, share, subscribe, and turn the bell icon so you're notified for whenever I release a new video. But until next time, guys, create, explore, and inspire. And I'll see you in the next one. Later.